Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we've got another little bit of a tutorial. So we've got skin tone mixes. These are not exact. They are not, there's no like perfect science to it. I mix a lot of stuff and it turns out pretty well. It works for me. Um, it might work for you. I'm gonna try my best to show you like the, I say exact, um, kind of the increments amount of paint that I use for different things. I'm gonna go through the different skin tones. Um, I have talked about if you watched my Monty Brown to or work in progress Wednesday, I wasn't completely satisfied with the um, the brown skin tone I had, but it was OK. So I'm going to show you guys that one. The other ones I've been pretty satisfied with. So um, without wasting too much time, let's get to it. So first one I'm going to do is the pale skin tone. So I've got my Hollywood Nova right here. And for the pale skin tone, I use a light mocha. I use sun-kissed peach. And then I use just a little bit of um, classic caramel and territorial beige. And I'll be honest, I do not remember at all how I stumbled upon these mixes. I just kind of um, went for it and it worked out. So we've got a little bit of the light mocha and that's gonna kind of just be the base color. Just that color alone is not that far off from um, these, the pale skin tone. And then it's gonna be the sun-kissed peach is gonna be the most in this one. So that's gonna kind of give it a little bit more of a pale. So um, not quite half and half, but you're gonna have some um, more of those two. So then I'm just going to use a little bit of territorial beige. So it's just going to be like a small drop. And then the classic caramel as well. Going to be a small drop in there. So with these skin tones, um, when you do paint them, sometimes they don't look spot on, but they dry a little bit differently than they go on so um that's been my problem with the brown skin tone is that it'll it looks good in the tray and then it dries and it looks um a little off so i put a little bit of this it's just some very generic paint thinner um put that in there so that when i do the skin tone it goes on a little bit smoother mix it up and i'm putting it in this little thing um and then i'm hopefully it'll like keep this so I won't have to mix it every single time but we'll find out in like a week or two so all mixed up here and that's gonna be the like pale skin tone so um, got this Jeff Hardy nearby so like this pale skin tone like you can see it matches up pretty well there and even on camera I don't know it may, might look a little light but here it's looking nice we are happy with that. Maybe could use a little bit more paint thinner. This is one thing when you're painting head scans, there's gonna be, I mean, depending on who you use, I guess, but um, I've got some from Hederation. Oh, this might mostly be Hederation. I got a British Bulldog here from House 14. And then a couple of these might be from Warsman. I got them in an eBay a lot, so I'm not positive. Um, but then when I paint skin tone, so I have these from my uh, decal tutorial. So I just pop the head on and then I like to paint the whole head. So I know some people will just paint the face, but I will just get layers on. And I like to paint the whole scan because I feel like I see the definition of the um, faces and like you see everything like the definition in the hair I just feel like you see it better once you get a layer of this um, skin tone on so like obviously the bandana is just plain I don't really need to know the, what the detail is there but I like to just paint it all up and then I will paint the whole thing and then I will put a um, I'll, like I'll put some matte spray on it, I'll take it outside, I'll spray all the head so that like once that skin tone is on, I don't have to worry like even if I'm painting it, if I mess up like the eye or something, um, I can wipe it off mostly 
um, it's still not something that you want to make a habit of doing. Eyes are hard to paint. Um, that um, Maybe we'll do that like a whole other day. But I'm going to get this first layer on here and um, then we'll move on to the next one. And I'll get these all, like the skin tones all done today. I'm not going to complete these probably. So there is pale. I don't know if I have a marker around. That's going to be the pale. The tan skin tone is not going to be much different. So I'm going to do the Davy Boy Smith here. Um, with tan, you're going to use, so you're going to use light mocha. Again, I've just found that that's a good base for the tan or for most of the skin tones. And there's two different versions of the tan. There's like a normal tan and then there's one tan that's a little more red. So um, I'm not going to do that one. I don't need to do it right now. I don't have any heads that I'm going to paint with that, but I will show you what I add to that. So I've got same with same again, light mocha is going to be the base. So that's got the most. And then the territorial beige is going to be a little bit, a little bit more than last time, just a tiny bit. And then real brown. So the tan skin tone was these ones. So gonna get those, just a little bit of the brown. One of my issues when I first started doing these was that I didn't realize like how like tan or how pale, like I just thought like, oh, it's the white skin tone. It needs to be like a, a whiter color. And I was making them too, too pasty, I guess. Also, one of the first skin tones I ever tried to match was Aiden English, which was like ghost white on those figures. So it was hard. Skin tones are not an easy thing to do. So this one, what do we got here? Here's Davy Boy Smith. So this is sometimes, so I have before, I've added a little mu too much brown. So um, this one, I don't know, maybe we'll lighten it up a little, a little bit. It's a tiny bit more of the light mocha in there. see and it's really not that much different from the pale skin tone um obviously like we saw you saw the mix there it was just um there's no peach in that one i've got another torso of mine yeah that's a good mix there so you can see he's got a lot of texture in his hair and you can really see that come out once you start getting it all painted up so I like to paint most of it and kind of plan out how I'm going to do things once it's all painted up you can see the teeth in there and you want it thin because if you're painting it like if you get a bunch of paint in the mouth you don't want it gobbed up to where it takes away some of that texture because that is what like really makes some of these scans are the little things Gonna make sure I get in the ears. So then I'll just paint over the hair. And then I do find it easier, like when I go back in and then paint the hair. Um, when I have some tan layers in there, it just makes it easier than like the gray, or you're gonna see I've got a head that's molded in black. So I'm gonna actually go over that. I've only I've never painted a head that's been molded in black, so I might try and go over it. Like I think I'm going to paint some white on the face first, just so that um, it le messes less with the actual color of the figure. But there's that first layer of Davy Boy, British Bulldog. And I'll set him to the side and we'll keep on going. Next up is going to be the skin tone that they think every his, every person with some even hint of Hispanic heritage has, um, which is like a tannish orange. 
um, which I used for my Taz custom a while back. So I've only done this one a couple times, but this is gonna be the skin tone I use for my Tamatonga. And um, this one is a different formula. So we've got classic caramel, and I might have to mess around. I can't remember exactly, because I've only done this one once. So we've got classic caramel. We have the territorial beige again. So I'll hold that up for you. Classic caramel right here. Territorial beige. Which might be the MVP. I think he's made his way into everything. Then it's going to take a little bit of the real brown. And then this was the wild card. So here's real brown. Um, you can see over here we have nectarine. I needed, I was not able, couldn't figure out that like last little piece it needed. So there's just a little bit of the orange in here. I'm gonna get our paint thinner in. And we'll mix it up. We'll see how it turns out. This looks like it's gonna be too dark. But we'll see. I remember messing around a lot with this formula with my Taz, so we'll see. That is not bad. That is not bad at all. So let me get these arms over here. So maybe we could use, make be a little bit lighter. And again, like the camera doesn't necessarily do it justice. I need a little more orange. So let's, did I say light mocha? Nope. A hint more, classic caramel, tiny dash more of the Okay, we've just got a bubble here, the nectarine. I think that should lighten it up enough. And it well, wasn't quite as thin as I'd like it. So like I said, it's not a science and I'm not saying that you're gonna go away from here being a pro ready to paint heads. I'm still learning, I'm still trying. I know that you can buy a lot of um, paints that just the skin tone matches. So um, maybe that is the, the way you wanna go but this is what has worked for me so far, and I don't mind the trial and error. This paint is cheap, I don't mind messing up every now and then, and you only learn by trying. Well, at least I do. Can't learn um, by listening to people talk. So here we go, let's give it a shot. And yeah, I'm happy with that. I am very happy with that. It is way more orange than I think. It's just ridiculous. Of course, if Mattel did this, he would undoubtedly be the Samoan skin tone that every Samoan has. Actually, I think they've done a, the Usos in this like orange tan skin tone. And this one is pretty light, so it'll take a few layers for it to really like come through, but I'm, I'm happy with how this one's looking to start out. And like sometimes you do a few layers and it doesn't look quite right. I'm gonna do uh, um, hair colors sometime too. I didn't wanna do that in this one just because that is way more uh, trial and error and kind of just very subjective. There, so the uh, texture stuck well in the beard, but you can see like his forehead's got some lines on it. Oh, no, you can't because I'm not even on screen. There we go. So here's gonna here's that first layer of Tonga, -tong and you can see it does not look great yet, but we will get there, folks. So there's going to, ooh, there's going to be our orange, I, I hate saying Latino skin tan, but that's what they use all the time and it's frustrating. Next up, we are going to do the brown skin tone. So I painted my Chris Bay head white. Then this one is going to be simple. We're just going to use some 
chocolate bar. That's what it's called. And then melted chocolate. And I, d I have not gotten this one down to where I like match it perfectly with Mattel, but it's been a decent look. So um, when it's just the head, like if I'm not painting the whole body, it it seems to be fine. Like it seems to look match fine. So just kind of like half and half of those. And then, I don't know, maybe you guys will just go on a full adventure today and figure it out right here, but I don't know, we'll give it a shot. Sorry for the shaking camera. Okay, let's give that a try. So I went about half and half and I don't know, like I think it looks good and sometimes it just, it doesn't dry as much as, or as well as I would like it to. So his hair is black. I'm not gonna cover this black hair just to paint the hair black again, but we'll get most of this area. We'll get like the sides up here cause it's gonna be a fade. So some of it's gonna need to be black and some of it is gonna need to be skin tone, so. I think overall, like I, I just looking at it, I, I'm really happy with the mix. So maybe I just effed it up when I was doing my, my Monty Brown custom, I don't know. We'll find out once we get to the end and I actually like pop it on the the torso I plan to use with him, but first layer, I am I am satisfied with that. Then to finish up, we have the Samoan skin tone, and that's gonna be another simple one. So we've got classic caramel for that one, and I'm just going to mix it with real brown. So I did this once on a head skin that I haven't even used. Um, it was a Haku that I had planned to use and then never got around to it. And now I don't know if I'm ever gonna get back around to it. Nonetheless, this is all I did. I just took classic caramel, took real brown, mixed those up, and then we got our paint thinner. And then I have a couple of head shrinkers heads. So I bought a lot from a guy a while ago that had a bunch of heads of people that um, we just got. So it had a brother love, it had the head shrinkers. It had a Tonga kid, which I don't know if the guy was just like, no, nah, we'll probably get this, or if he just decided not to, but it had like a book of love from Brother Love. Um, it just, it had a bunch of stuff that I wasn't like excited. I wasn't like mad that I got it, but it was a bunch of stuff I was like, oh, what, what the hell am I gonna do with this now? So. Um, I actually don't think this is the skin tone that they use for the head shrinkers, but um, I don't know if I'm going to even use these heads. So if I want to repaint them later, we can. But this it was like kind of a middle between some of the other mixes. So I put a little too much like this, a little too thin, but that's OK. So I'm going to get this done. Sorry, I keep drifting off the camera. My bad. Trying to get the important stuff at least. These are cool looking head, sc head scans. I like, they're, they're different than what we got from Mattel, so don't mind. It looks very, very light, that first layer, so might need to add some more brown in when I come back around, but here's Rikishi or uh, Fatu at the time. I'll find something to use these for. Yeah, it's very, it looks very light. And I don't know if it's just because I put too much thinner in there. So it's just very liquidy or if it's because the skin or it's because the head scans are pale. But I think I'll put some more brown in there the next time through. So I'm going to time lapse a little bit and just paint a bunch of layers on these heads so that you can see them um, a little better. Like it just, it comes through much better once you get more layers on so gonna get that done and we'll be back at the end to kind of check things out
All right, so I'll show you guys the finished product here. So we'll just take a look at the head shrinkers heads and I just grabbed some bodies of the same skin tone to kind of show you guys, but here's the Samoan sort of skin color, that rock skin color, even though these head shrinkers are, um, I think they're more in the um, color that I use for Tamatonga. Oh, let's get them a little closer. So there's that one. Next up, so I just grabbed some random bodies. I'm not gonna say who, but I, I, I'm sure some of you could guess who this is gonna be. But here's the pale skin tone. Here is the tan skin tone. And it looks better, like sometimes still because obviously this is painted this is molded that skin tone looks a little off on camera but in person looks a little um more alike and depending on how many layers of spray you put on or even if you just put on a little bit like that'll change the look a little bit so just for like starters that that bulldog head looks pretty good next up is the crisp bay that i was working on you can see it looks a little more red compared to the body, or at least I think it does on screen, but in person it looks different. And even Mattel's figures are like that, where you can tell when they paint the torsos and they, or like if they paint or mold it, it'll look different. Here's the Tamatonga. And I actually went ahead while I was doing that and got a Tonga Loa ready as well. So those guys are coming soon for work in progress ones. So I just gotta, make sure I get that formula down right. But the last thing I actually wanted to do, so got this Taka Michinoku here. Um, someone asked me how I do the heads or like how I fill them, if I put sculpting clay, what I do with them. And I was gonna show you cause I think most people just like put sticky tack in them and there's nothing wrong with that. But I like something that gives me a little more flexibility with um, like being able to move the head and I want to make sure it's not going to fall off. So I do, I don't know, maybe what, what I do is a little more unorthodox, I guess. And it was, I tried explaining it to someone, but, um, it is just, it's hard to do in words. So I was going to do it, show you guys. So we've got this sculpting clay, my sculpting clay that I use, um, well, the thing fell off. I don't even know. It's, I think it's like the green stuff from Amazon is what it's called. Um, but you have to mix these up together. So mix it up. Obviously blue and yellow make green. So once it's real green is kind of what you're looking for to get it all mixed up. And I haven't used this one a lot, but I always use equal amounts depending on or I know like sometimes if you use a little more yellow, it might be more pliable. Um, if you use more blue, it might be a little hard, I think. Something like that. Sometimes you just kind of have to mess around things. But for me, doing them split evenly is what works the best. So what I do is kind of like try to replicate how the heads are from Mattel anyway. Let's see if I have a head nearby. Um, maybe, here we go. So you can see, like they just have that the hole in it. I've dremeled this one out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take this Taka Michinoku head, and this one is completely empty. There's no hole or anything in it, so. We'll see how much we need. But what I do is kind of roll it like this, get it into sort of an even ball. And then I'm going to kind of like make that circle, make that hole to put in there. Try to get it kind of even, see, that's a little big. So take some clay out, do that again. Roll it up. Okay. 
And if you're using sculpting clay and it gets sticky, you can just um, like put some water on your hand, put some water on your figure, it makes it a little bit easier. That is not very even. Man, okay. Of course, the day that I decide to show you guys what I'm doing, I'm just crap in the bed, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll get it here. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I've got it rolled up here in like a little circle. What I'm going to do is just kinda get it into the head. There, so you can see that it's poked in there, it's got the hole. So now what I'm going to do is I've got some water. Like I said, if it, it won't stick if you get it, your hands wet or get the figure wet. So I've got the Taka Michinoku body. It's gonna get the peg a little wet. And then I'm going to just push through the hole in the middle. Now this head's sitting here Then move it around a little bit and then like ease it out. So you can see here it's down in the head. It's got enough room for the peg. And then um, I normally let it dry for like a day or like I'll just leave it overnight. And typically that's enough. The longer you leave it, like the more it'll solidify. But it does have a little bit of pliability to it. So even once you do this, um, after before too long like it'll start to harden up and then with this stuff I've noticed once it dries um, I don't think it expands but as long as you're not like mashing it around it holds its form really well so then next time I can just pop the head on and it's not coming off I, I'll be able to move it around a little bit which I'm not going to now so I don't mess it up but um, this head I'm gonna repaint it I think it's a good likeness, but anyway, that's how I do the heads. I know that people have asked me other questions. If you have other stuff, just let me know. I'll gladly show you how. And like I said, I am no master at this stuff. Um, I've just kind of learned as I've went and I have some things that work for me, some things that might be a little different than other people, but overall I want to help where I can. So if you have questions, let me know. You can always hit me up on Instagram, ask stuff, you can comment. Whatever you need to, feel free to reach out. That's going to be everything for today, though. So I appreciate your support. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, comment. And remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can buy more action figures. Figure Dude out.